Let's go ahead about unit 1, B1A, talking about relationship, right? Take a look at this picture. How would you answer the question here on the cover of this book? How many friends does one person need? So, tell me about close friends and good friends and acquaintance for you. What is the difference? I'd say everyone needs at least one really close friend to confine in. A good friend is someone who... How do you complete this sentence? To me, a good friend is someone who... What's your opinion about a good friend? So, let's check the difference about close friends, good friends, friends and acquaintance. Let's check the definition for each kind of friend here. We're going to pay attention to this reading. And we're going to match the paragraph to the types of friends, right? So, we have numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, let's read and match the four paragraphs to the types of friends. Listen aren't really friends. 1. Acquaintances. These are people you know slightly, but they aren't really friends. It might be someone you know through work or sometimes talk to on the train. You can memorize their names, faces, and traits and remember them when necessary. Basically, if circumstances force you to talk to each other, you are this type of friendship. If you really want to talk to each other, you are friends. According to Dr. Dunbar, 150 is the maximum number of such connections your brain can manage. 2. Friends You might have hundreds of them on Facebook or other social media, but are they real friends? These are the people you're usually in contact with, though not necessarily on a weekly or monthly basis. You might socialize now and then and enjoy each other's company, but if times get tough, they won't hang around to help you. Maximum number, 50. 3. Good friends. These are people you may hang out with and probably get along with. You have fun together and can tease each other. You know you can call on them if you need some help. However, if you have a serious problem, they're not necessarily people that you can count on. Maximum number, 15. 4. Very close friends. These are the people you can rely on. You would trust them with your secrets and your problems and to take care of your children. They'll be there beside you in good times and in bad. These are the people you can borrow money from when you need it. Marlena Dietrich used to call them the friends you can call at 4 o'clock in the morning. They're like family in a way. Maximum number, 5. You see? So... As you can see, each relationship here shows a number that you completed here, right, in your books. So the acquaintances that are people, sometimes strangers, that we know but they are not as important as our close friends. People are colleagues from work, classmates from school, sometimes neighbors, right? Some people that you get the buzz of the train every day. You see? The number for acquaintances are 80. And number two, good friends, they are 15 only. You see? You can have friends a lot as in number three. 50 is the number of friends, but good friends only 15. So you can have a lot of friends, but good friends, you don't have so many, right? And the last one, number four, very close friends. This one, hmm, 
You can count just with one hand. Five is the number. How about you? Are you a good friend? Are you someone's close friend? Or when you talk about yourself, do you have a lot of friends? How many friends do you have? What about the close friends, the ones that you can count on? Now, we're going to listen to a talk about a famous anthropologist. Professor Robin Dunbar is an anthropologist and evolutionary psychologist at Oxford University. He is famous for calculating Dunbar's number, which is an estimate that the number of relationships humans are able to manage is 150. He believes that this number has been almost the same throughout human history. From small villages in the past, all the way up to the modern age of international travel and social media. Dunbar's number came from research Professor Dunbar did with primates in the 1990s. He discovered that there was a connection between the size of these animals' brains and the social groups they belonged to. By using the data he collected in his studies of primates, he estimated that humans should be able to handle only 150 relationships at any one time. In order to build relationships, should be able to handle only 150 relationships at any one time. In order to build relationships, we need to remember details about people's lives, etc. So the size of our brains is an important factor. According to Dunbar, our brains can only hold enough information to maintain about 150 relationships. This number can be seen in lots of different situations. The size of villages, remote tribal groups, the number of Christmas cards we send, and the average number of Facebook friends we have. Of course, within these 150 relationships, there are different levels. The first is made up of about five very close friends. The next 15 are good friends, 50 friends we see reasonably often, and then the remainder is acquaintances. This number is based on averages, so it's possible to have more or fewer people in your social circles. However, if we have more, it will be difficult to manage and the quality of the relationships will suffer. It seems that 150 is the best number. With this many people, we can maintain stable, honest relationships. Let's check some expressions here that many people have committed some mistakes. So the common mistakes today are I can only count with my family. Is it correct to use the preposition with, count with? No. So the correct form is count on. You can count on me. Never count with me, right? Another example. These are the people most close to you. Most close. Is it correct? No way. So the correct form is these are the people who are closest to you. Do you understand? Superlative form when the adjective is short with one or two syllables. Uh, you just add S. So you say the closest. All right? Ever the most close. We use the most with long adjectives. Okay? Three or more syllables. Right? Let's do another activity. Take a look at these photos here in, on the cell phone screen. My question for you is, which of these people are Ellison's friends, Ellison's good friends, and very close friends? Pay attention to the difference that Dunbar's theory uh, about friends, good friends, and very close friends, right? So, let's listen to the conversation here and check the answers later. That's a nice picture. Are they your colleagues? Yes, they are. 
They're a great bunch. Luckily, we all get along really well. When did you take that one? That was taken at the Christmas party last year. Looks like you had fun. What about this one? Who's that? That's Lucy. She's my sister's best friend. She's a musician. Does she play professionally? Yes, she does. We often go to watch her. Can she play any other instruments? Sure. She's really talented. One of those people who can play anything. Oh, what a nice shot. Who took this one? My dad took it, I think. This is Dominic. We've known each other since kindergarten. He's great. The kind of person you can always depend on. So, out of all these lovely people, who are you closest to? Hard to say, really. I love them all. So, checking the answers. Most of these people here are her colleagues, right? Some friends. Lucy is a good friend, but the very close friend is Dominic, right? So, these are suggested answers. Let's go on. Now, take a look at the questions they ask here about friendship, right? And let's analyze, let's identify what kind of questions are they. Are they yes-no question? Double-H question? Is she uh, talking about her friendship with information? Does Jamie wants to know about some information. So let's check here the questions. The first one, are they your colleagues? This is a yes, no question. Let's remember, what is a yes, no question? Yes, no questions are the ones that we ask to make a confirmation. So when we ask to confirm something, you ask the question using the verb in the beginning of the question, right? So, when I ask, are they your colleagues? The answers are supposed to be with yes or no. That's why the name of this question is yes, no question or confirmation question. They start with a verb, right? And the next question that we have here. When did you take that one? When it is a question word. Every time a question starts using an interrogative pronoun like when, what, who, where, how, they are named double H questions. Do you remember that? We had already studied about the types of questions in the previous levels, right? Here we are making some notes about types of questions and pay attention to the difference, all right? So yes, no questions, they start with the verb and they expect a yes, no answer. So your answer starts with the yes or no, right? And double H questions, they are questions that we ask for information. You are asking about information, right? And the answers are longer, not short, because you are giving extra information about something, right? So when I ask, when did you take that one? You see, you are asking for information. When? Questions about time, right? And then you answer, that was taken at the Christmas party last year. So you, you answer, when you took that photo, all right? Last year. Can you say just last year? Yeah, it's more informal to answer like this. But in the grammar, we expect to give complete and long answer about it. Okay? Another question here. What about this one? Who's that? Both are yes, no questions or double H questions? Pay attention to the structure. They both start with what, who they are question words, interrogative pronouns. So, 
they are double H questions or information questions, right? The next question here, as you can see, Jamie asks about does she play professionally? So she's a musician. The question is just a confirmation about if she is a professional musician or not. You see? When we ask questions using the verb, the auxiliary verb in the beginning of the question, we are confirming something and we expect the answers to be yes or no. So does she play professionally is a yes no question or confirmation question, right? And the answer is yes she does. So she is a professional musician, right? Another question here can she play any other instruments again? We know that she's a musician. We just want to make a confirmation about other instruments. She plays the instrument, right? But does she play other instruments? We ask to make a confirmation about what we expect to be true, right? So, it is a yes-no question because it starts with the verb can, can is the auxiliary verb here, a modal verb asking about ability, remember that? And the answer is sure, sure equals to yes, right? You are making a confirmation, sure, yes, of course. So sure indicates affirmative answer and it is a short one, right? And the person here, Alison, gives extra information. She's really talented, one of those people who can play anything, right? But you are not expected to give long answer extra information. No, you are expected to answer yes or no. That's why the name of this question here is yes, no question, all right? Next question, what a nice shot. Who took this one? Who took this one? This is a double H question because I want to know information, the information of a person. Every time that my question starts using who, my question is about a person. Remember, we are going to review double H questions, information questions, and yes, no questions for confirmation, right? Another question using who in the end of this conversation? Jamie asks, so out of all these lovely people, who are you closest to? Who? Again, a double H question asking about a person, information about the person who is closest to Alison, right? So uh, sometimes when we talk about a relationship, we ask too many questions. Remember that in our last live, we talked about this. I asked you to make questions to your friends, to your classmates, right? And then you could ask anything. And many people got a little shy, but asked some questions. And most of them were information questions. Where were you born? Remember that? Where are you and your family from? Right? Um, sometimes we heard some people asking yes, no questions like, um, do you like pizza or something? Right? Just making a confirmation. I love pizza. What about you? Do you? So I'm asking for confirmation. So this exercise, we have the seven questions from the conversation, right? And you're going to identify the four types of questions in the grammar box. We are going to study about four types. Remember that we talked about the conversation and we discussed about yes, no questions and double H questions. But pay attention. Sometimes we have the questions that end in prepositions. Example. Who are you going to travel with? With is in the end of the question, not in the beginning. In Portuguese, we ask questions using preposition in the beginning of the question, right? 
So I say, com quem você vai viajar? Com quem? The preposition is in the beginning of the question. But in English, you never ask with who are you going to travel. Never. We use the prepositions in the end of the question. There are some questions that we can use the prepositions at the beginning. We're going to learn about them later, right? And also, when we ask double H questions using who, we are asking about subjects. So, when we ask who cooked for you, I'm asking about the subject of the action. I'm asking about the person. It is an information question. It is a double-edged question. But the main objective of this question is to get the information about the person, the subject of the action, right? So that's why we name subject questions. So let's check which one here is a yes-no question, which one is a double-edged question or information question. If it is a subject question or an object question. So, when we talk about double-edged questions, remember, we ask about the object, the information about something, or the information about a person, someone. So, it is a subject question, right? If I say, what did your mother cook? I'm asking about the object. I know the subject, your mother, she cooked for you. But what did she cook for you? My question here is, what did she cook for you? So, I want to know the complement, the object. And then you can say, ah, she cooked um, soup, right? And then, if I ask, who cooked this soup for you? Who made this soup for you? Who prepared this soup? this food for you? This is a subject question. Pay attention to this. Number one, are they your colleagues? What kind of question is it? Is it a yes-no question or a double-edged question? When there is an auxiliary or a modal verb, the other is... What is the word other here? We have the verb before the subject. Right? So take a look. Auxiliary verb plus subject plus another verb. This is the structure of a yes no question. This is the order. So, number one, is it a yes no question? Auxiliary verb, the verb to be, plus the subject plus the complement. Because the verb to be is the auxiliary verb and not necessarily together with a verb. When we use the verb to be with another verb, it is in the ing form. Remember, are they going to school? You see? So, number one is a yes, no question, right? Which other sentences here are yes, no questions that start with an auxiliary verb in the beginning? Numbers four and five. Let's check. Does she play professionally? You see, we have the auxiliary verb, does, for he, she, it. And then we have the subject, she. And we have another verb, play, and the complement, right? And number five, we have can, that is a modal verb, an auxiliary verb. She, the subject, and the verb, play, and the complement. So, numbers one. Four and five are yes, no questions, right? Are they your colleagues? Does she play professionally? Can she play any other instrument? Yes, no questions or confirmation questions, starting with the auxiliary verb, and they are expected to answer yes or no, right? So when there is no auxiliary, we use do to form the question, like does she play professionally or he, she, if we use does, right? And for the other person, we use do. Remember, in the simple present tense, we ask you questions using the auxiliary verb do or does, right?
And when the main verb is the verb to be, remember, we just invert the subject and the verb. The verb to be is the auxiliary verb, and it does not need any other verb. Just if it is in the present continuous tense, ing form, right? Now, take a look at the questions that we have ending in prepositions. So, the preposition comes at the... How do you complete here? At the end of the sentence. So, take a look at the sentences we have. Numbers 1, 4, and 5 are yes, no questions. So, which other sentences here are the questions that end in prepositions? Tell me. So, let's check. Number 7. Question number 7. You ask the question using the preposition in the end of this, right? So the answer is number seven. Who are you closest to? Here, my question is starts with a question word. It is a double H question, right? You are asking for information, but you have a preposition at the end of it, right? So... Every time that you have a preposition at the end of the sentence, it is a double H question. It is an information question, but it is also a question ending in preposition, right? This is the type of question that you have a preposition at the end of it. Remember that, right? So, we have numbers 2, 3, and 6. So let's go ahead now in double H questions. Two, three, and six. Are they object questions or subject questions? Remember the difference? When we ask you for information about the object, the complement, and when we ask you for information about the subject, what's the difference? What is the word order here? Let's complete. Take a look. Let's identify the sentences. Numbers 2, 3, and 6. Which one is object question and which one is subject question? So the answer is WH questions that are object questions. Number 2. When did you take that one? It is an object question because the subject here is you. I know the subject. My question is about the complement. When did you take that one? When? The time. So you answer, long answer, giving the information they need. The time. That's why we named this object question. The structure is question word, when, auxiliary verb in the past, did, the subject, you, the verb take, plus the complement. That's one, right? And question mark. What about subject questions? Which are they? Numbers 3 and 6. Number 3, who's that? And number 6, who took this one? Both questions here are double H questions. You are asking for information about a person. So you are asking for subject. Who is the subject of the action? And number 6, who took this one? Who is the subject that took this photo? You see? So when we ask for information about the subject, so the word other is question word, who, most of the time, plus the verb, plus the object or complement, because you don't have the subject of the action. The question is about this information, right? The subject. Did you get it? Let's go ahead in the grammar practice. Take a look at the questions here from 1 to 8. Recognize the problems, the errors, the mistakes, and correct them. Number 1. With who do you live? Number 2. To which country you would really like to go? Number 3. Did you win out the last Saturday? 4. Who does help you? With your humble five. With which three people do you spend the most time? Six. 
How many languages do you think speak well? Seven. How arrived you to class today? And number eight. Have you a best friend? So, pay attention to the incorrect structures and correct them, right? Number one, pay attention to the problem here. I never start a question using preposition, remember? So, this is a question using preposition type. And every time that you see in the beginning of the question, before the question word, the preposition, this is incorrect. It's an error. So, you're going to eliminate where, right? And then you ask, who do you live? with. You see? Who do you live with? This is the correct way to ask this question. It's a question using preposition, right? And then we go ahead and number two. To which country you would really like to go? This is similar to number one. A question there you are using the preposition in the beginning of the question, but it's not correct. How do you correct it? Pay attention. You eliminate the preposition on the beginning of the question, right? And what do you do? Which country you would really like to go to? The preposition comes to the end of the question. And the auxiliary verb here, would, comes before the subject. So the question is, which country would you really like to go to in this case, right? Because the preposition here is in the end of the sentence. Okay, at the end of the question. Never in the beginning. Did you understand that? So the correct question is, which country would you really like to go to? Remember, I never start a question using preposition, right? Questions using prepositions, remember, we use them at the end of the sentence, right? And remember here, the error, you never ask the question using the auxiliary verb after the subject. No, the order is before the subject. So the correct way is which country would you really like to go to? Right? This is the correct form. What about at number three? Did you went out the last Saturday? What is incorrect here? I don't use the form of the verb in the simple past tense when in a question, because when I use the auxiliary that indicates the past, did, I don't indicate the past in the verb, because did has already mentioned that this sentence here is in the past, so the correct form is eliminate did, no, eliminate when, so how do you change that? You don't use when, so what do you use? You say, did you go out the last Saturday? So I don't use when, I use go. I only use when for affirmative sentences. In the negative, I say I didn't go out. All right, so let's go ahead. Number four. Who does help you with your homework? This is incorrect. Take a look at number four. The question is a subject question. I want to know the person who. In this case, I don't have the subject here. My question is about who helps the person here with the homework, right? So my question is a subject question and I don't use does the auxiliary verb before the verb because in this situation I'm asking the question about information 
who the subject is. So, who does help is incorrect. The correct form is who helps you with your homework. Remember, every time that my question is about the subject, the structure is who plus the verb and the complement, the object, right? And I don't use the auxiliary verb when I want to know the subject of the question, right? In number five, take a look. With which three people do you spend the most time? I eliminate the preposition again because I don't start a question using a preposition, right? So I never ask with which, no. So when I have a question type that I use the preposition, remember, we use the preposition at the end of the question, right? So the correct form is Which three people do you spend the most time with? So the preposition goes to the end of the question. Remember that, right? Number six, how many languages you can speak well? So what is incorrect here? Remember the order of a double H question? When I want to know the object, of the question here is the structure is followed by the auxiliary before the subject and then the verb. So, what is wrong here? It's wrong because when I ask how many languages you can, it's not a question, right? The question, the auxiliary comes before the subject. So, Pay attention to this. I don't eliminate anything. I just invert the order. Instead of saying you can, what do I do? I say how many languages can you speak well? So I just invert the order. Can comes before the subject. In a question that I want to know the complement, the object. The subject, I know it is you. Number seven, how arrived you to class today? So, I'm asking here a double H question again, because I'm using how, right? But pay attention to the verb used here. It is in the simple past tense, but I don't ask questions using the verb in the past tense. Right? Because when I use the auxiliary verb of the past did, I don't change the verb to the past. So the correct form here is, and don't use arrive, right? I don't use the verb in the past when I ask a question using the auxiliary. So the question is, how did you arrive to class today? This is the correct form. And the last one, number eight, have you a best friend? It is incorrect. I never ask the question in the simple present tense without the auxiliary. The auxiliary of the present tense is do and does for he, she, it. So how do you change this sentence in the correct one? You say... Do you have a best friend? So I start the question using the auxiliary of the present, do. And when I ask this question, do you have a best friend? I'm asking a yes, no question. Remember that? The structure is the auxiliary verb plus the subject plus the main verb and the complement. That's the correct form to say that, right? So, let's pay attention to the answers correctly. Who do you live with? Which cafe would you really like to go to? Did you go out last Saturday? Who helps you with your homework? 
Which three people do you spend the most time with? How many languages can you speak well? How did you come to class today? And number eight, the last one, do you have a best friend? So, let's organize here the types of the questions. Which ones are double H questions and which ones are yes no questions? So, yes no questions are number three and number eight, right? They start with the auxiliary, we have the subject and we have the verb here plus the complement. I want to get a confirmation about something, all right? And which of these double H questions here are the ones that end with preposition? Let's check. Number one and number two. I don't start with the preposition. The prepositions are here at the end of the question, right? And another, number five. I don't ask with which, no. The preposition comes to the end of the question. Remember that, right? And which double H questions talk about subject questions? The ones that I want to know the subject of the action. Remember, when I'm asking a question about the subject, I don't use the auxiliary. So, here I'm using the auxiliary, number one, right? And Questions using who directly with the verb. I'm asking about the subject who performed the action, who helped you with your homework. This is a subject question. Do you understand this? And which are the questions here about the object of the question? You see? They are double H questions, but they talking about the complement, the object of the action, right? So we have, so the last one is number seven. Remember that I don't use the verb in the past. I ask, how did you arrive? How did you get to? How did you come to class today? I use the auxiliary verb, did, right? Before the subject and another verb. And number eight is, a yes, no question again. The structure, I'm using the verb, the auxiliary verb in the beginning of the question, right? It is a yes, no question because I'm making a confirmation. I never ask, have you, directly with the verb. No way. All right? Do you understand? So, the most common mistakes people make are where your best friend lives, we forget what the auxiliary verb for he, she, it, we use does. So the question, correctly speaking, is where does your best friend live? No S is used because we are using does, that is the auxiliary verb indicating the simple present for he, she, it, right? And the second one, most people commit this mistake a lot. They say, who did say that? It's not correct. So the correction is, who said that? The past tense of say is said. When I ask a question, subject question, uh, I ask the question using who plus the verb directly. No auxiliary verb is used. Did you get it? So, let's finish our video lesson. Remember that we were talking about friendship, relationship, and we talked about the differences among close friend, a group friend, a friend, and an acquaintance. For each person, remember that we have more intimacy when they are close friends, right? And good friends are the ones that you trust, but they are not so intimate, right? 
a friend is a person that you like a lot, but it's not so important as close friend. All right? And the acquaintance are the people around you that you talk, that sometimes you have a conversation. Some people are strangers for you. They just study with you in the same class or they live next to you. They are your neighbors. So for each person, think about these questions. How long have you known him? How long have you known her? How well do you get along with him? Or how well do you get along with her? Get along, remember, means when you know how to deal with the person well. Okay? With respect, with friendship, honesty, and other feelings other emotions, right? The third question here is, how much do you have in common? Is this person a real close friend? A good friend? A friend or just an acquaintance? This question tells you a lot about this person. How about um, the things that are similar between you and this person, right? Next question, what's he up to these days as far as you know? Or what is she up to these days as far as you know? So what's up? And how often are you in touch? Do you talk a lot with this person? Do you tell this person all your secrets? Is this person honest with you? What about you? Are you with this person? And the last one. Are you doing anything together anytime soon? So we have plans together with this person? Okay? So write the names of a person who is a very close friend. People who are good friends. People who are just friends. And the ones that are your neighbors, people that go together with you by bus to school or something, right? The ones that study together with you, they are the acquaintance, right? Which number is the biggest? Do you have more close friends than good friends? Or do you know more people who are acquaintance than close friends? Think about it and tell me about your relationship in the next slide, right? So we're going to discuss about relationship, talking about media, and especially debating about if you have too many friends and if you really know who are your real friends, right? What about you? Are you a good friend? Are you a close friend of someone? How do you know that? Is there any special feeling about that? To help you a little about understanding the difference among acquaintances, friends, or very close friends, you're gonna listen to this conversation about who they consider these people in their lives as acquaintances, friends, or very close friends, right? So let's listen, pay attention to these people here about who are friends, who are acquaintances, and who are very close friends, right? Listen. A. We only just met. She seems nice. So this was letter A. What about letter B? B. We've known each other for many years. We get along really well. So what is the relationship between letter B, Ben and Luke? What about letter C? Check. C. We drifted apart for a few months this year. 
But now we text each other many times a day and go out every weekend. I know I can rely on JJ. So, JJ and Bill, what is their relationship? Remember that drift apart means when you get distant from the person, right? Letter D, listen. His name is Rob, or Bob, I think. So what do you think about it? E. I haven't seen Joe in forever, but we email from time to time, and I'm going to invite him to my wedding next month. It'll be good to see him again. So what is the relation between Joe and Pete? And the last one, Meg and Amy. Listen. F. Amy and I have a lot of fun together when we meet. Uh, we're going out on Saturday for some pizza and gossip. I haven't seen her for a while, so we'll have a lot to talk about. And the answers are letter A, Tom and Lucy are acquaintances, right? Ben and Lou are very close friends. JJ and Bill, the same way, very close friends, right? He says that he can rely on her, he can trust her, right? Sue and Bob, or Rob, remember, she doesn't even remember his name. They are just acquaintances, right? Joe and Pete are friends, the same way as Meg and Amy, right? So the ones that you can trust, the ones that you tell your secrets, they can be names your very close friends. Remember that acquaintances are the ones that you don't even remember the name sometimes, right? So make a list of your friends and describe their personalities. Think about the way they are and what kind of relationship you have with these people around you people who you relate with. Are they your acquaintances? Do you have a lot of friends? Do you have very close friends? Let's talk about this in our next slide, okay? Remember to do your workbook exercise so that you can practice more and you can study more vocabulary, you can get more grammar structure practice, right? So please do it. There are some exercises there you can have a lot of fun, like this one, you see? It's a quiz about love, right? So it's the person who you think about a lot. Maybe your love, your future love. Try, have fun. Do your workbook exercises, all right? See you in the next video lesson. Thanks for watching. So, thanks a lot for watching this video lesson. See you in the next one, right?